Hey everybody, if you've ever wanted to take an old SCARA robot made in the 1980s and turn it into the world's dumbest wire bender, well, you've come to the right place. In the first part of this video series, I described what I'm trying to achieve and talked a little bit about uh, wire bending in general. And in this video, we're going to make some parts and assemble the bending head that goes onto the robot. So, let's get going. In the Hilbert curve video, I started by modeling the end of Lenny's z-axis shaft and then built the rest of the design around that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm also going to model the wire itself so we can see how it passes through the device. The wire is going to need some sort of a drive wheel uh, to move it along. And I'm going to use a drive wheel from a MIG welder and that's going to need uh, a stepper motor to turn it and I've opted to go with a direct drive so the the drive wheel is going to be mounted directly onto the stepper. I need some sort of a mounting plate to hold the stepper motor in place so I'll model that as a simple part. And then we're going to need an idler wheel to put some pressure against the wire uh, on the drive wheel the idler wheel will need uh, an axle to turn on and for that we'll just use a M8 bolt and a nut and the idler will be held in place on a, on a tensioner uh, that will kind of wrap around the idler and it will pivot on uh, one of the mounting bolts that holds the stepper in place. The idler will be pressed up against the drive wheel uh, on the tensioner mechanism with uh, a spring. Uh, a bolt and a couple of washers will provide the, uh, the structure to hold that spring in place. And the bolt will pass through into a bottom plate that will, it'll serve a couple purposes. It will hold the uh, two parts of the bracket apart and it will also give the anchor point for that, uh, uh, that tensioning spring to uh, thread into. This way we can adjust the tension on the spring by driving that hex head screw into uh, the bottom plate to create more tension or less as needed. The front plate is identical to the back plate and is held in place with four hex head screws that pass through uh, both plates into the stepper motor. I designed the adapter piece basically by copying the uh, adapter that was on the old manipulator. Uh, it's just a revolution that will have four holes in it and the he more hex head uh, cap screws will go through that and attach the uh, adapter mechanism to the two bracket plates. And finally, I'll make a threaded piece that is the, the tip. Uh, this will thread into the bottom of the bottom part of the bracket, uh, and it'll have a hole through the center for the wire to pass through. Uh, by making it threaded like this, I can uh, make a number of them depending on the uh, thickness of the wire that I'm bending, so I can keep the, the center hole pretty close to the wire uh, diameter itself. And then uh, it'll have a, a rounded tip on it, and the whole thing will just thread into the bottom plate. We're going to make this thing. Let's start with the easy parts first. I pawed through my scrap drawer and found a suitably large stepper motor. I found a MIG welder drive wheel uh, on eBay for a couple of bucks, and I ordered that. I'll need to make an adapter for this particular drive wheel. I took the dimensions off of here, including the inner diameter, outer diameter, and the chickness. And I modeled this up, the inner, outer, and the key modeled. And what I'll need to do is make, um, I'll need to turn a part uh, that matches this. And it's just going to be a simple steel part with a bore for a quarter inch that matches the uh, stepper shaft, a groove for a snap ring to hold the drive wheel in place, a keyway uh, to keep it from turning, and then a drilled and tapped hole for uh, a set screw to hold the adapter onto the shaft. Thank you. 
The adapter piece is another bit of lathe work, this time in aluminum. Fortunately, I had a big enough piece of stock and a three-jaw chuck that would hold it. The front and rear brackets will be made from quarter inch aluminum. I need a CNC job with operations for drilling the holes and a profile of the uh, inner oval cutout and the outside contour. And I'll do a second setup to drill the holes on the uh, top edge. Uh, otherwise the two parts are identical. The tensioner is the most complicated piece of the whole assembly. It will require a CNC operation to drill one of the holes, a pocket operation for the bearing pocket, and a contour operation for the outside piece. A separate setup will be required to drill the hole for the spring assembly. The bottom plate is a straightforward piece made from half inch aluminum stock. It will require a couple of setups to drill the different holes, but I'll do this largely as a manual milling operation without a CNC job. Okay, I think it's time to finally do the assembly of this thing. Putting everything together uh, actually goes together really smoothly. Um, the parts that I made in here were made over, I think, three Saturdays over the course of about two and a half months. I just wasn't in a big hurry to finish this project up, uh, but I kept picking at it until it was done. About the most complicated thing um, isn't shown in the video at all, and that is the wiring that was completed uh, to make Lenny able to drive the stepper motor. Lenny uses servo motors, which are driven by a Mesa card. Uh, it's a 5i25 FPGA card with a 7i77 breakout. And uh, I really like this hardware. It's the same hardware that I'm using on the milling machine. And I've just found it to be very reliable, um, really very nice hardware. Uh, but the, in order to control that stepper motor along with it, I had to source a, uh, a stepper driver and then a separate parallel port breakout board. Now it's not wiring to a parallel port on the computer, it's wiring to a, a second port on the FPGA board which happens to have the same pinouts as a uh, parallel port, traditional parallel port. But with that assembled, um, Lenny's able to drive a, a stepper motor and the configuration is exactly the same as uh, a, a stepper on Linux CNC. With the assembly done, I stuck the, uh, the finished thing onto the end of Lenny's Z shaft and tightened it on with the set screws. Wiring in the, uh, the stepper motor, um, I used a, I guess I call it a Hershey block or something, and then zip tied everything so that it won't get tangled when Lenny moves around. Okay, now we've got a functional bending head and a robot that can move it around. The next step, uh, probably the most important thing, is we need to be able to generate some B code, uh, some, some wire bending instructions that uh, Lenny can follow. So in the next part of this video series, we're going to focus on the software. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button or come along for the ride. Thanks.